welcome to a tutorial on the new features in the December edition of ID Mapper. We've made some cosmetic changes and added a lot of new functionality that I want to uh, show you in this uh, small tutorial. First, cosmetic changes. If we change to vertex paint mode, what we see is that we now have a panel with all the available options identified by colorful icons here in the toolbar. The paint menu with all the options is still available as well, but many people find it more convenient to have a panel here. Now, the functionality in itself hasn't changed, so if we click on ID Mapper, Suzanne will get her vertex colors depending on the different um, uh, mesh parts that are in the mesh. But we now have also all sorts of new uh, functionality. For instance, we have the option to convert the vertex color assignment to materials as well. Simply by clicking vertex colors to materials, we will have a list of materials um, available. Uh, for each vertex color in this uh, group. Um, the color of the diff diffuse node and the um, viewport color is uh, set to the vertex colors as well. So this might be convenient if you uh, not so much want to have an external program uh, to create materials, but for instance to apply um, procedural structures to different kinds of uh, vertex colors. Um, it's also now possible to um, create vertex colors based on vertex membership of weight groups. So if we go to Suzanne's mesh um, and change to edit mode, we can actually see that we've created a couple of vertex groups uh, that, um, that we can use as an example. If we change back to vertex color mode, vertex paint mode. If we now se select vertex groups to vertex color, then for each vertex group present, there will be a unique color and each vertex that is a member of one of those vertex groups is assigned the corresponding color. It's now also possible to directly bake vertex colors. So you can bake vertex colors um, if you use Blender's built-in bake functionality, which is quite cumbersome. It needs a lot, of, a lot of steps. You have to create a material with an emission shader, etc., etc. Uh, but in some circumstances, when you do not export, for instance, a mesh to an external program, but want to have access directly to an image that is a representation of your vertex color map, it might be easy to bake those vertex colors directly. And indeed, we now have this option. If we click on bake vertex color, and after a couple of seconds, we get an actual image with the colors according to the UV map. So for instance, if we go to edit mode here, you can actually see that each, uh, each vertex and each, uh, each face has, has gotten its own uh, a color assignment. So this is a quick and easy way to directly create um, a baked vertex color map. Let's reset our interface and go back to 3D view to show you the last uh, options that we have. For instance, this color assignment is pretty um, contrast, contrasting. So, but sometimes you have uh, randomly assigned vertex colors that are very close to each other. And that makes it difficult to pick a vertex color or an ID color, for instance, when you're using Substance Designer. So we now have the option to normalize those colors, which means that each unique color will be assigned a different color and all the colors together will be chosen in such a way that they are as far as apart as possible in the color cube, which 
makes it very easy to distinguish between them. And the way you do this is by normalize vertex colors and then it gets these very contrasty uh, far apart colors um, assigned. The final bit of new functionality lies in the ID color list. For instance, uh, it was already possible to, to work with a color list, so a company-wide list of uh, uh, ID colors that represent a material. So for instance, if we load such a, um, such a material map or color list, for instance, we want to use this, this tan color for skin and this light blue color for eyes or whatever. And it's very easy to work with this list in vertex paint mode. So if I, a face paint mode. So if I select face paint mode by pressing P and then for instance, uh, select control one to select the first item in the list, I can now assign this skin color with alt K to every blue part. Um, which is nice um, and useful. However, if I want to build up my initial list, I probably want to add slots for every color, every vertex color that is not present in this list already. And for this, we have this init button. If I click this, oh, leave face paint mode. If I click in it, then for each color that's not present here, um, it will create a new slot, which is an additional change. You can now see by this little asterisk that the uh, color list has changed. So you will need to save it. Uh, any change to the color list is indicated this way so that you know whether you need to change uh, to save it if, if, if necessary. Now, earlier we created materials and they had these, well, rather unimaginable, uh, unimaginative uh, names. If we remove those materials and create this map again, so choose vertex colors to materials. You will now see that for colors that are present on the mesh and in this material list or in this color list, the name of the material is taken from this color list, which makes it a little bit easier to, to, work, uh, to work with. Of course, materials or colors that are not present in this list um, uh, or have the same name like this material, it will get again this default name for the material. So this is the new functionality that, uh, that is present in the December release of ID Mapper. Hope you enjoyed it. ID Mapper is available uh, on Blender Market. Uh, see the links in the description below. Thanks for watching and goodbye.